Welcome to another episode of our Good Business Inspo 7 Minutes of Impact. Today we've got Damon from today. And Damon, welcome, thank you. I'd like to just get you to take a moment to tell everyone who you are, what do you do, who you do it for, what makes the way you do it so unique. So yeah, Damon O'Sullivan, CEO and one of the founders of today. We work in, I guess, service transformation. So we work around redesigning and reimagining the services that organizations deliver, I guess with a, a purpose focus. So around this idea of what's the, the most social environmental kind of good they can be doing. And so we think of things like what the service experience is like for any user to make sure they're really inclusive, to make sure they're accessible to everybody and to make sure they kind of hit the impact goals of the organizations we work with. I'm a, a, a fan for businesses that create impact in the world and there's many different ways to do it. Tell me about your business's impact model. Yeah, it's one, I think we started with an intent to do good. It was pretty vague. <laughs> and I guess over time we saw two ways that we mainly can make a difference. One is I think just amplifying what's already good. Sometimes we just work with the good guys and they can be charities of all sorts or government departments or social sort of sided businesses that are already doing or having a really good impact. And we just hopefully bring the kind of right talent mix and good levels of thinking to amplify what they're already doing, um, amplify their impact. And I think along the way, the other thing that we try to do is inject impact. So looking for more opportunity to deliver more impact, which again is, I think that idea of just being an impact opportunist. So just keeping your eyes open around mm. what could be possible. And if something's already working, what else could it be doing? So mm. I think that level of a little bit of optimism, a little bit of creativity around what could be good here, you know? And yeah. Now, and stretch it. I'm fascinated always about the start point for this kind of thing. Where did that desire to do good, where did that come from? I think the short story is a sort of very well-trodden cliche that Adam, my co-founder and myself, worked at a digital agency that was, you know, one of the better ones in the country. And I was more in the technology side, he was more in the design side. And that, I guess, became part of a big group of agencies of that multinational sort of group and and became an advertising agency for a while and i think we just found ourselves not being that into advertising maybe in there by accident and, and felt a little bit like we were just in the wrong spot for you know different reasons so we got out and, and started to work together again and started to win work that was a lot like that work and, and i guess that it kind of helped us feel our way around what we really wanted to do and it, and really it was just this hope that we could do what we love, which was innovation and technology and design and creativity, but doing it just for the stuff that mattered most. So I think we saw those complex social problems the around us and, and all the challenges in front of us and thought it would be amazing to spend more of our time worrying mm -hmm. about that stuff than, you know, selling, you know, popcorn chicken or whatever <laughs> it could be doing. So that, that was the basic plot. And I think in hindsight, it probably went better than we thought. You know, it was more successful and well loved than we ever thought it might be but i think looking back earlier in my life i think there was just this sense of wanting always having a sort of social impact focus but at one point thinking i can't do that and work at the same time <laughs> so i think for me it became this idea that maybe this is possible like maybe i can spend my nine to five doing the good stuff which yeah. has been really feels really lucky and really exciting and still something we're really energized about just doing more and more and more of you know that's really cool i know these journeys don't just unfold magically and smoothly and <laughs> can you tell me about some of the challenges you encountered on the path and what you learned from them in a sense we we were properly i'd say naive really naive so at the beginning we hadn't worked with not-for-profits before we hadn't worked in what we call that sort of purpose sector before so we hadn't worked much with government hadn't worked really at all with not-for-profits hadn't worked with I guess, non-profit sides of not profit, but, you know, the social side of business. So it was all kind of new to us. So I think the first few years were real discovery mode, just sort of doing and thinking and trying to figure it out. And I think it was hard for us in those early years, A, to sort of, you know, starting any business is hard. So just sort of staying alive seems to be the, the first challenge. But I think also trying to understand where we could sit, where we could add value, where we were 
we might be useful. So I think for us, it was sort of this experimental, let's just try and see and fight and all that sort of stuff. And over time, I think you could start to see the patterns of where we seem to fit better mm. and where we set our clients seem to think you guys are awesome. And, you know, so in a sense, we let a few years go by, I think, before we started to really get any firm pictures of what we would be, yeah. uh, which I think was probably helpful. I think mm. that, that real wait and see. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Yeah. Can you share a story or an outcome that really illustrates the impact that your business is designed to do? There's a few. Uh, there's one um, that I loved in recent years, and that was around mental health reform down here. And part of the sort of recommendations to be implemented was this idea of going from a health-led crisis response from a justice-led, police-led sort of crisis response. So if, if someone's dialing triple zero and there's a mental health episode or, or something happening that the, the health professionals should be leading that response for a better outcome for all involved and for us it's sort of like a service level problem in that there's a service experience that needs to change but in this case it was just really complex because it was you know four or five different organizations working together to deliver that piece of service so i think in that setting where we can be really useful is getting people together and creating the space where they can really focus on outcomes and focus on working through things like cultural differences between organizations and operational differences and all the things that make this stuff really hard and complicated and staying motivated around a goal so for us we would say that's around that sort of facilitated community-led co-designing let's get people with lived experience and really walk use design and, and strategy in a way that involves lots of people to solve a quite a complex problem but stay motivated and be trusting of each other and more things you need to make that come true mm. so that's you know we love that kind of thing more simply you know we do there's a not-for-profit that we've worked with called the resilience project and we help them more with like an operational piece of infrastructure digital infrastructure that just made their service delivery a whole lot easier and a whole lot better and made the experience of their users a whole lot better which made the impact of their programs better so i guess we do different things but a lot of the time it's trying to work on those enablers for our clients so they can amplify as i say yeah, awesome. extend the impact they make so the shaping of your impact as it's got as the intentions and initiatives have evolved what effect have they had on your business itself so clarity of the like you said you started with the intention to just do good and those two pathways kind of illuminated what's the impact on the business and your people that has evolved out of that clarity it's funny because we've done a lot of different things we use some some fairly similar methodologies over and over but in lots of different ways so honestly it feels like it's clear up we're 12 years in, and and it feels like every year it gets clearer. <laughs> but we're, we're probably never 100% sharp. But I think right now it feels like there are patterns of problem, and there's patterns of the way we work. And I think there's good clarity internally around how to apply those and what the kind of the essential ingredients are internally. So the things we talk about internally are building trust, creating room for creativity, and really. Uh, stretching our thinking and bringing optimism and courage and all those sorts of things to the work. Mm. So I was, I was mentioning, you know, just before that idea of we had a, a retrospective day where we talked through all the projects we've done. And I think these sort of, yeah, qualities of how we work are really consistent, even though the work we do is quite varied. So I think we're sort of learning through continually doing and reflecting, I guess, mm. the, the bits that work and where they might apply in future projects and it's very fitting for what it is that you do there <laughs> it's great i think this, that we're, we tragically design as forever so we'll never quite finish do not running the thing uh, you know everything's a work in progress and especially impact right so one of the things looking forward i, I think from that those introspective days or retrospective days have you set more future goals that you know, for the impact for the business yes i I think our, um, again, a very basic goal for us is around, you know, there's depth and scale of impact, I guess, is what we think about. I think the big opportunity in front of all of us, I think, at the moment is you've got technology expanding and accelerating, like has been promised for years, but is actually happening in front of our eyes now. And I think with that is the huge opportunity around helping scale those smaller organisations or programs or products or services 
using that technology is really amplifying that good like we've never been able to before. So I think for us, it's about, you know, focusing in on on that as an opportunity over the next few years. Like how do we apply what used to be impossible technology, which is now widely available and cheap to really make a difference. Mm. So that's a focus. And then I think really thinking about inclusive design practice and designing for all and community led and all these sorts of things, like what does it all mean in those spaces? But yeah, I feel like right now in the dawn of AI, I feel like it's technology is a great enabler again, like it was, I think, when the web really got started. It makes a lot of sense given the assistance you're doing with service delivery. I, I can I can see those pathways immediately. Absolutely. So many opportunities. It, it does feel like it's kind of 1995 in the internet. You know? it's, um, it's going to be 20 years ahead and, and you're not sure where it'll take us. Yeah. Great. What would you, advice would you offer for somebody that is new to the purpose world or at the cusp? On, they want to make a difference. What should they be thinking? And I, I don't know. For me, a barrier at the beginning was I didn't think I had, it felt a bit silly when we started. Like I didn't feel like we had the right to say we were wanted to do, you know, good work or that people would take it that seriously. And I think what we found wonderfully true really, really quickly was people really want to work with people who share their values and they they just become motivated and you motivate each other. And it's actually that thing that more than you would ever expect once you start saying i want to do something good people will get behind and support because Mm. not because they want to push you up the hill necessarily but they definitely want to push that impact or purpose or goal with you i think that's what we found kind of unexpectedly strong in the beginning and still is today like there are people that back us really not because so much that we're us that it is just they believe in what we believe in they want to see the change we want to see so you, you end up joining a kind of quite coalition of people that are working really hard to yeah. do the same thing and that's pretty lovely and B Corps a good example of that this sort of network and and you don't think much of it till you're in it but then you think oh these are all people and we're all sort of marching in the same direction trying to you know create a better world which is lovely to be part of so mm. I guess all of this sort of cynicism and hesitation in my head if it's in anyone else's head, you should sort of quash it and just waste it. <laughs> <laughs> Imposter syndrome is real. Like, so, yeah, yeah totally. Right. Yeah, that's totally. Uh, where can people find out more about you and the work that you and your awesome team are doing? I think we're just today.design is our strange URL. So, yeah, you'll find out more about us there. And we're happy to, again, we care about what we do probably more than we care about ourselves. So, we're always happy to chat and share. So if people are kind of interested in how we work or, or the sorts of things we've done, we're, we're, sort of, we're very happy just to share what we've learned along the way. So, yeah. Thanks for the chat, Damon. It was awesome to have you here. For those of you watching, if you want more of this, hit subscribe, share this, and stay tuned for another edition coming soon.